Hello there, you, Adam Cleary from 442 here, and um, did you know they're going to completely mess with the format of the Champions League soon, because they are. So yeah, starting next season, and by next season I mean the one after the one we're about to enter, so not the 24-25, the, the, the that one, that's what it's called. The format of the Champions League is going to change more than it's ever changed before. And that new format is slightly confusing. In fact, here is a dramatic reenactment of me reading it for the first time. Uh... So yes, ever the guardian of truth, justice, and at least one nice diagram, 442 have sent me here to explain to you how it's gonna work. So... Alright, so the main headline here is that the Champions League is moving from a 32-team tournament to a 36-team tournament. Actually, just as an aside, that's quite a misleading number, because the Champions League is actually being played right now, as you're watching this video. The qualifying starts in July every single year, and there's like 50-odd teams in that, and then six of them qualify. So in reality, there's actually like... 70-something teams. But the Champions League proper, what your dad considers the Champions League, 32 teams. And the thing about 32 is it's a nice round number to have a tournament with. It divides into two all the way through to getting one winner. So if you want to expand a 32-team tournament, you've kind of got to move it to 64 teams. So that would mean the top eight in the Premier League qualify, and you could get, like, four teams from Scotland. And that would be great news if you f***ing Kilmarnock or something, but it would make for a very weird tournament. So instead, they're just adding another four teams to take it to 36. But, of course, because that's not that nice round number, you've got to mess with the format to make that work. And mess with the format they certainly are, because there's no more groups anymore. It's one big league with all the teams in it and you'll play a certain number across the campaign and the middle group they'll go through into the next round and the top group they'll get a buy into the next next round and then we go back into a knockout thing before we finally get a winner now i will i promise show you exactly how that works but first i just want to tell you why they're doing this so this new format takes you from 32 teams to 36 it takes you from 125 games to 189 games and the reason uefa want to do this come in come in a little closer more, more, come on, come on. This is an exclusive for 442, by the way. The reason is money. They're doing it because of money. It's literally just about money. They want to make more money. They think this will make more money. By adding room for more teams, you reduce the risk of one of your blue chip UEFA clubs like your Man United, your Barcelona's, your Real Madrid's, your Juventus's, your PSG's. All the ones that bring loads of television revenue, you reduce the risk of them not qualifying. And by increasing the number of matches, you have more product to sell to broadcasters. The Champions League currently makes you wait for about three and a half billion euros every single season. They think by changing the format to more teams and more games, they can add about a third more to that pot and get them up to about, what's my maths like? Like four and a half billion euros every single season. At least. And of course, those aforementioned really big clubs absolutely love this idea because it reduces the risk of them not qualifying and they get a bigger share of the prize money. Don't know if we've all forgotten the whole European Super League thing, but that was pretty much about A, making it so they were always in these competitions and B, that they were making more money out of them. You see, everyone's a winner. And by everyone, I mean the already super wealthy. So how's it going to look? Well, it's going to look like this. As you can see here, it's going to be one big league table full of all that season's Champions League teams. And the way it works is that each team will play eight games against random opponents, four at home and four away. And what I mean by random is there will still be some seeding and some clever way of working it out, but it won't be like the group stages where you and three other teams all play each other. The games will feel really varied and you'll get a bit of everything. Now, they originally did want to do 10 games each and oops, lol, awkward, France just relegated two extra teams this season so they would only have 18 so they could make room for the extra fixture congestion but no the clubs have convinced them let's only do eight let's keep it relatively sane now after these initial eight games the teams ranked 9th to 24th will move into a two-legged one-off knockout round this will whittle them down from 16 to 8 and those eight teams will move into the last 16 along with the top eight teams from the original league table so does that make sense the last 16 is comprised of the top eight teams in the league they make up half of it and then the 
the other half is the next 16 teams having a little mini round. Now, the reason for doing that does actually make quite a bit of sense. Rather than just having the top 16 sides advance into the next round, by knocking that down to 24, you effectively make pretty much every single game feel quite important. One problem UEFA think they have identified with the current Champions League format is that some groups tend to be over by match day four. Like, not all of them. Obviously, some of them stay right to the wire and they're dead exciting. But if you've got a group with two dominant teams in it, the other two teams are just out of there by like the third or fourth game. So by staggering it this way, there is a hope that even the teams at the very bottom will always feel within a shout of getting into those top 24, and the teams around the top should all be close enough that the difference between getting a bye into the next round and dropping into the qualifier should feel quite perilous. Whether it turns out that way in practice, though, your guess is as good as mine. Now, while the rest of the tournament will feel pretty familiar on paper, it's two legs, home and away, all leading up to the final, they have actually made some pretty significant changes here as well. First of all, there is currently a rule that no clubs from the same countries can meet in the last 16. There is a ban on that until the quarterfinals. That's gone now. You can play whoever comes out in the last 16. But the big change is that the way they will draw the round of 16 is now going to be fully seeded like it's a tennis tournament. So once those 16 teams have been decided by qualifying, we will know exactly what path every single one of them has to the final. The top one and two will be at the very far end and then it'll kind of work its way into the middle, which should in theory keep the biggest clubs apart until right at the end. Is that fair? I don't know, but that's how most sports do it. Now, I will say there is something quite exciting about that. Like, if two teams are absolutely dominant in that first group stage, the only possible time they will meet again will be literally right in the final. Now, that's how it works, but who's going to be in it? Well, out of those 36 teams, the first 32 will just be exactly as they are now. Like, it's all based on UEFA's national coefficient, so English teams do very well, so we get four teams. And then the Spanish do quite well as well, so they get four teams. So that'll be exactly as it is now, but obviously there are four more places to allocate. For two of them, they're going to use this slightly complex system where last season's performances in European competition is all sort of bundled together and whichever nation does the best, they'll get one of those. So right now, that would be England, and I think Netherlands would get it as well because Ajax and other teams did really well. Anyway, so more than likely, there's going to be five Premier League clubs qualifying for the Champions League every season once they make this change. Weirdly, this could actually lead to a scenario where seven Premier League clubs are all in the same season's Champions League because you'll have the top four, they'll be there, won't they? And it might be a year where they get the additional coefficient play, so that'll be the top five. And if by some weird circumstance the actual holders of the trophy aren't in that top five, they'll be there as well. And if an English team wins the Europa League the season before, they get an automatic qualification play. So that would be... That'd be nuts, wouldn't it? So there you go. That's how UEFA plans to make loads more money. Sorry, what am I saying? That's how they plan to reformat the Champions League. That's what I meant to say. I hope that makes sense because now my brain hurts. So please let me know if you understand it in the comments below. And if you have any questions, I've been doing a lot of research on this. I've been reading a lot of stuff. So if I've missed anything and you've got any quandaries, please let me know and I will do my best to answer those. In the meantime, though, if you like this kind of thing, why not subscribe to us here on 442? It's a really good YouTube channel. I think so. And while you're at it, get me on Twitter threads, Instagram, everywhere I exist. Adam Cleary, C-L-E-R-Y. That's my entire outro. It's too hot in this room. I'm going to say goodbye now. Goodbye now.